Hi, I'm so glad you're here. This is Melissa, and together let's find those grounding magical moments in our lives that nourish our spirituality. Episode 12, when you find yourself in a stinky public bathroom. Recently, we went to Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park in the United States, which were amazing. Whether walking or driving, I noticed I was taking deep breaths in the mountains as if I could store the air in my body. In the past, I usually had to remind myself to do that, taking deep breaths. So it felt so good that I noticed my body was doing it involuntarily. Along the beautiful scenery and trails, of course, I had to go to the bathroom, one of those little wooden stalls and where you would see in a lot of American state parks and national parks. Sometimes the bathroom is clean, but as you walk in, the smell just comes straight at you. They were surprisingly stinky. <laughs> and suddenly, all the good mood, of, you know, love of nature, beauty, joy, and optimism, they just suddenly vanish. And suddenly, I hate the world again. Huh. And that contrast just seems so comical to me. As kids, I didn't, um, as a kid, I, was, I didn't go to the uh, parks or the nature often. I lived in the city. And whenever we did go to a park or a forest, the adults will say, ah, free air, it's rare mountain air, breathe in a lot of it to make this trip or this ticket worth it. Common Asian mindset, gotta make it worth it. At that time, I didn't get it. I didn't really like going to the outdoors because of the bugs and it wasn't unpleasant as a kid to me. But now I do and especially now that I'm away from home, it's obvious that not every place have the same air. Sometimes it's the location and climate. Maybe it's the industry surrounding an area. When I go back to Taiwan and then to California, ah, great air. And recently upon moving from California to Colorado, again, great air, it's mountain air this time. Sometimes it's it's timing, you know, there's maybe the dust, dusty, dry season, or there might be the fire season affecting the air. And sometimes there's individual situations like health affecting access to air, nice, um, nice quality air. So yes, the adults were right. It's amazing whenever you get to have some fresh air. So in this amazing trip to the mountains, every time I walk into a bathroom stall or a porta potty, noticing the smell is worse than usual, that it was affecting my thoughts and my feelings. Every time that happens, I will laugh a little bit inside. Nothing brings you back to the physical plane like some nature human waste. However pristine nature is and however pure we strive to be in chasing our spirituality, we'll always be producing animal waste. The sacred animal, sacred natural world are producing waste all the time. For example, recently we're, we were at a, a, a national grassland far from the main road and we we're surprised to find even their built picnic tables out there. We were so happy, happy and walked over with our food and realized we walked straight into a concentration a circle of cow pies. Apparently, they like gathering there too. The most hilarious thing was a little perfect round cone shaped poop on the picnic bench. Not the usual big ones on the grass, but it was on a chair pretty small you can hold it in your hand where someone would be sitting just like Hershey's kiss so I anyway, know about bathrooms if everything goes smoothly things function well and the smell is ignorable it's just another beautiful cycle of being an animal if not 
smells can immediately spoil the mood. Sometimes I not only feel flustered, but start having negative thoughts, blaming the visitors, judging the facility, things like that. However, the next funny thing is when we leave the bathroom, we forget all about it immediately. We jump right back into what's ahead of us, and it's really a trivial thing bathrooms and how they smell. Even if it's unpleasant at the time. So when I do log in and it's unpleasant, I focus on two things. One is picturing how we get used to scents very quickly and they become unnoticeable. The other is picturing walking back into fresh, clean air. Because after we get used to it, suddenly the normal air becomes refreshing. So, just nice and neutral visioning. Not getting caught up, just enjoying being an animal and thank those who maintain the environment. Some places in rural areas have signs saying, please don't throw in any garbage because they are difficult to remove. Meaning the staff has extra work to do to remove them. I wondered, I wondered if it would be more effective if they could scare people by saying, Imagine you're the one who has to fish out the garbage from the poop, so please don't throw in garbage. Anyway, random thoughts there, but you can even say maybe. To adopt a mindful attitude towards that smell. Paganism talks so much about facing darkness and our primary animal instincts. This is one of them. I guess we can. There's also a way to say, we can face it and recognize. The truth. <laughs> Recognize the humans and activities around dirtiness and waste. Because that's kind of putting our、um, our human human aspects into it. The stuff,、uh, the staff working there, the bathroom just being one of their problems. Or visitors having a good time, or it's parents helping toddlers, or any family member helping out a family member to clean up because just out of love and care. Or that maybe physical and health conditions coming to people who never sign up for what was coming. There's all these kind of things around. This is usually actually a lot of love when we. Or imagine we're, t- we're thinking about、um, cleaning and and this kind of situation. It's often it could be around our family and loved ones. But、um, yeah, so there's oddly a lot of far thoughts about this topic. Going pretty broad, but I've always been a little bit fascinated with. How we face dirtiness and the unclean or even disease, and the viewpoints, including spiritual view- viewpoints, that could explain our relationship with it. It's trivial, but it's can it might also be not、uh, in any given moment, and perhaps it's that in the end, we're always exiting and looking forward to the next beautiful forest and a hopeful vista point. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.